part 12 of the Sonic.exe tutorial series after like, what, a month? If you did not see the post of what's been going on recently and what is going to be happening in the future, then first of all, go see that post. Long story short, I just got back from like an eight day vacation and I'm back here for exactly a week and then I'm gonna be leaving for a 10 day vacation. July was definitely gonna be a very busy month in this year, I knew that probably even busier than any of the months in the school year. It's crazy. So that's why there hasn't really been any tutorials recently. So I'm going to try to crank out as many as I can this week. My prediction is maybe I'll be able to get two parts out. There'll be this part here and then hopefully another part. We'll see how it goes. And then after that, probably wait till after that vacation is over. And then once that vacation is over, I get back on the 27th. And then from there, that's all the vacations, that's all the traveling for me, so then at that point we're just waiting for school to start up again. So after that, I'll just be trying to crank out as much videos as I can during those two weeks. We'll see what happens, we'll, we'll see how it goes because um, when school starts I'm definitely going to lose lots of time, obviously, because school going on during the week. And then uh, my swim season starts up and that happens right after school, so I basically don't get home from school until like 5.30 so I definitely lose time during the week but that swim season only goes on till November so after November the content can kind of speed up again but once school starts up again expect it to really slow down and hopefully by then that's why I'm trying to like finish the tutorial the sonic.exe tutorial series within this time because then once I'm done with that series I can work on like small little other tutorials like maybe Sonic CD time travel or um, I don't know I don't want to promise anything that I'll regret anyway in this tutorial did I shake the thing anyway in this tutorial we're gonna be going over making multiple endings in your EXE game it might sound difficult to do but trust me it's actually a very easy process I had someone comment about this a few days ago and, and I they, it made me realize that like well it's a pretty big part of EXE games nowadays having multiple endings depending on stuff you do in the game sometimes it's something you have to collect a switch you have to press an item you have to well it's something you have to do I don't know there's lots of different varieties of what it could be that triggers this secret ending or good ending or bad ending or whatever ending depends on how many you have. So after that comment I got it made me realize that it would actually be a good thing to squeeze into the Sonic.exe tutorial series. And I thought it'd be a long one but it's actually a pretty short and easy thing to figure out. I mean I could literally explain it all right here and maybe you'd get it but um... The only reason this tutorial would be long would just be from me yapping and explaining things, so um, this will probably be a shorter tutorial, but we'll see what happens. It means I'll be able to get it out quicker and hopefully pump out more tutorials before I go back on this next vacation. Um, okay, that's it for the intro, so let's get on to the tutorial. This right here is basically just the normal test level Act X, except all of the emeralds are deleted except this one right here, because this is going to be our example of what will trigger our secret ending. And then this right here is what shows us which ending we ended up getting. And now of course this is going to really vary depending on your EXE game and the lore you have, so that's why I just tried to make it really simple for myself here. This is kind of almost like uh, the Sonic.exe Spirits of Hell type of thing where it's like and who survived this nightmare and it shows who did depending on who did survive. I'll show off what we're going to make and then I'll explain how it works and basically try to make it as easy for everyone as I can. So in here we just have the normal test level act X. I'm going to go over to that emerald and uh... uh well, I forgot about that emerald, but that's not the one I'm thinking of, so that's fine. Up, oh, yeah, there, okay. So, it'd be over here, down in like, this secret area was kind of already here, but had nothing in it, so I just thought it was a good spot. So we're going to collect this emerald, and then we're going to try our best to get out of here. We'll see if... Yep, okay, there we go. And then we'll just go beat the level normally. Okay, so we've beaten the level here, and then 
it'll transition on to the next frame that shows which ending we got. Which ending did you get? I got the good ending because we collected the emerald. So now I'm going to show you what will happen if we do not get the emerald. Again, just wanted to say that the purple emerald means nothing. I forgot to delete that one. The green emerald is the one that triggers it. So we're gonna not collect the emerald, and again, we'll just go through and play the level normally. Okay, so now we've beaten the level and we did not collect the emerald. So now we're gonna go to that frame and we'll see what happens after not collecting the emerald. After all the score adds up. Which ending did you get? You got the bad ending, because we did not collect the emerald. Okay, so as you can see, it's a really simple system. If we collect the emerald, we get the good ending. If we don't collect the emerald, we get the bad ending. So, how all of this basically works is ba basically all it is is a global value in here that's just called emerald, and this gets triggered when we collect the green chaos emerald. And then in this frame, when it when it's in here, it'll check if the emerald's equal to zero, it will change, it'll do the whole thing like bad ending because it's we didn't get the emerald. If it's set to one, meaning we did get the emerald, then it'll do the good stuff. And obviously I'll kind of show some prime examples. You can really see what I meant by the fact that it's this is actually really quick and easy because that's literally all there is to it. I could end the video right now and you've gotten all the information you need because literally that's all it is i mean you just have to apply it to whatever gameplay your game has to it but basically all you would do is create a new global value just name it whatever you want maybe ending or like ending check or which ending and um depending on sometimes you might have something like this where it determines what ending you got other times it's something that's going to actually affect what the ending of your game looks like so basically in the spot of wherever your game so let's say it would be the end of this level so this ends up going to which ending so um it basically in the spot in your game where the endings would split off where it all of a sudden starts to either go to one ending or another ending right there is where you could check the value of the global the global value check the global value and depending on which one it's equal to it'll go to maybe a frame maybe certain events will play that's basically all there is to it and then obviously for the for my case uh when the player collides with the emerald we get setting the emerald to, we set the emerald value to one so that way the game knows that we've done that so that way at the end there it will uh, play the good ending so um gosh I mean that's really it yeah probably the shortest tutorial I've ever made and didn't really even have to make anything I mean I made these but this is just an example for my case obviously there's really no point in making anything because if you're watching this and you're just gonna apply it to your game and your lore I mean if you're really curious how exactly this works uh, start of the frame, I change them to stand-up sequence, I just copy and pasted the player skin onto here, and then I added uh, the victory post for that good ending, because I didn't have it in there. Uh, then when timer, if the timer equals 3, if emerald value equals 0, it'll do the game over sound, the hurt sound, it'll uh, fire, both of these will fire an event end, and end here is it triggers to fade, and that's where you could go to the next frame, whatever. Uh, this changes the sequence to disappearing, which is just the die animation. It starts a movement he has, which was um, bound, or not bound small, pinball movement right here with gravity of 20 and speed of 75, just to replicate like the dying sequence in the Sonic games of him bouncing up and going back down. Uh, and I had to, for some reason, I had to set the directions to these because it was bugging out with the directions. So um, there's that, and then I used a text blitter here. This isn't a string, this is a text blitter that I don't 100% know how they work, but I know that it takes like an image here, like say this sprite sheet, it takes this and makes like a typeable, it makes like a font out of them that you can use. Um, I myself am still like learning about this blitter thing, and then you have to type all caps or else it's not gonna work 
for this specific case. So it just has which ending did you get and then over here I change it to either you got the bad ending or you got the good ending depending on how it goes. Uh, and then good ending just has play stage clear, same event, and change animation sequence to victory, and then end has set fade to one. So that is how my case works. And then here it's just set the value to one. Whenever, whatever event would trigger the next ending, whether if there's an, in this case, it's like an item we collect. So if we touch the emerald, we mean we collect the emerald, that'll set it the value to one, which can, will change the ending. If it's an event you do or an area you go to, again, you just change the global value, leave it at that, and then towards the very end here, you just check the value and find out what it is, what the player did, and give them the ending that they deserve based off what they did. Um, obviously, if you have more endings than good and bad, if you have like best, worst, normal, uh, whatever, any more endings you can think of, uh, same thing, same value. Uh, obviously, I don't know how it would be with multiple endings, depending on like more events and stuff. Uh, sometimes you could use multiple global values. Sometimes you can just have one global value be set to different numbers. So instead of only zero and one, sometimes you could check for two as well to see if that was another ending they got. Like, let's say I should have done this in the example. If I had, say, the purple emerald we left there, hmm, I might just want to do that real quickly. Is that be cool? I'm going to make it where uh, the purple, if we touch the purple emerald, it will give us a secret ending. So when I find the, there we go, purple emerald, because I left that one in anyway, I'm going to set emerald to two. And um, let's say, copy this, change this to two. I'm just doing this for fun in my case. You get the point of what I'm saying. You can have something else trigger another ending. Uh, let's say we do that, but then we make this say you got the secret ending so something like that so we touch the M so if we get the purple emerald, because the purple emerald is kind of hidden back here so it works perfect for a secret ending type of thing if we collect that emerald and we beat it we get a secret ending and here's something you could actually think about uh, if we get the purple emerald but then we get the green emerald as well uh, it'll mess up the values of course and only give us the good ending and not the secret ending. So if you're in a situation like that where there's different events that can trigger different endings but there's a chance of both events being triggered, then you can have a determination system for those events to check if the value has already been altered. So let's say um, if I collect the purple emerald first and the value set to 2, then um, in here under the collision with green emerald, we can add a is per, is a value of emerald equal to zero. So that way, so let's actually, no, that's not it, it's emerald. So let's say here, we check if it's equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, we'll take it. Probably the same thing here. So these will only trigger when the value is equal to zero so that way they don't affect each other and don't affect each other's ending. So it can depend on which one you get first. If you have multiple events that kind of add up to a one ending, so let's say you have two, let's say um, there was one ending for getting each, di let's say um, if you only got one emerald, it gave you the good ending, but let's say if you got both emeralds, it would give you like best ending or secret ending, then in that case, instead of setting these values to that, you could, uh, add to add of add to a value so let's say it's set to zero at the very start you could have it where uh when you collect any of these two emeralds it adds one to the value and then at the very end depending on how many emeralds you collected it'll check for either one or two so if it's none then it's like bad ending you didn't get any of them if it's one then okay maybe good ending or decent ending you got at least one emerald or checking for two, meaning we got both emeralds, would be like best ending or secret ending because we got um, all of the emeralds. 
So that's really it. It's I there wasn't really much to show here. It's just take that knowledge I gave you and apply it onto your your game, your lore, whatever gameplay you have going on. That's really it for this video. Very short like I said, very straight through and easy and like I said it's long because I'm yapping and explaining. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh I'll Guess I'll see you all in the next tutorial, which should hopefully be within the next week. Uh, yeah, that's really it. Goodbye.